welcome to the seventh episode of Downtime Podcast, where two coworkers talk about video games. I'm Elisa. I'm Jeremy. We're shooting in the morning this time. This is our third take trying to do this. Mm-hmm. It's also tax season, so things kind of suck right now. Forgive us. Yeah, <laughs> but we have a pretty packed schedule on this podcast, and we're going to try to run through majority of these before the first client meeting happens in this room. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do it. All right, so... First thing we're going to talk about, a few days ago, the new Star Wars Battlefront 2 trailer came out. Yes, and it was pretty cool. It was really cool, and it highlights single-player campaign. Mm-hmm, like a cohesive story. I know, which is what Battlefront, the first one, didn't have. It's actually the reason why I didn't, I didn't buy the game. So I played Battlefront at one of my best friend's uh, houses, and it was cool. Like, it was fun, but... The entire time it was co-op or I was like playing online and I mm-hmm. asked her, hey, does this have a does this have a story mode? And she said it didn't. And that was pretty much my that was my sign that I shouldn't buy this game or I, I wasn't <laughs> planning. I wasn't planning on buying this game until the price dropped and I just never got it. But yeah, no, seriously. Um, I so technically the one that came out two years ago is the third game in the overall series. Yeah. Well, third major release. There was like one on the PSP, like two on the PSP, mm-hmm. and then there were two on the PlayStation 2 consoles and the Xbox console. What confuses me though is that the first one is called Battlefront, and then the se- and the second one is called Battlefront 2, and the third one is now back Battle- to Battlefront. And then the s- and the fourth one's called Battlefront 2. Yeah. So it's like, well, I don't know what they're trying to do because I- the first two <laughs> games were pretty solid already. Okay. I didn't play the first two games, so it's not a remake. Uh, it's it's is it a rebranding? I don't know. It's not really a reboot either, because you can't really reboot a game that's based on a movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it, it's a remake. I would say it's a remake, but not like a. Well, actually, no, it's not a remaster. A re, it's not a remaster, <laughs> and it's not a remake. It's more like they just wanted to do their own thing, All but right. not copy the very first one. Okay. Because I've I've sunk a lot of hours into both the first and second one. The second particularly, uh, shout out to Moss Eisley in Hero Mode, where you could just be all the <laughs> Jedi and Sith and all the yeah. special characters in Battlefront Two and just fight each other. It was it was the best mode ever. <laughs> and and it looks like this one's are kind of bringing that back in the new Battlefront Two trailer. It looks like it. It's Darth Maul versus Yoda in I like the Phantom that. Menace chamber, Naboo chamber thing. I saw that. Yeah. And. It's beautiful. The trailer was really pretty. Yeah, it was prettier than the 2015 game. I know. <laughs> it's because the uh, last game, it was just DICE working on it. And, you know, it took a while for them to finish it because it, they were the only ones working on it. Now there's, like, three studios working on the same game. So it's, like, I Criterion, Motion, I think. I don't remember the name. It was something with an M. And then DICE itself. So I thought that was pretty cool. So now we're, gonna, we're getting a faster release for this Star Wars Battlefront game. And it looks like this will be the ultimate Star Wars Battlefront game since they have both... Uh, prequel content, uh, original s- trilogy content, and sequel trilogy content. Yes, and as a person who kind of who's very casual with the Star Wars series, yeah. just like I watch it for an action movie, but not necessarily follow the storyline. I I I'm pretty excited for this. Yeah. I think it's going to be a pretty good game. I think so too, and I I think that um, I'll probably buy it when it comes out. Well, mm-hmm. I'll. Wait for some reviews to come in first, yeah. and then I'll. Oh, speaking it. speaking of that, that was another thing. The fact that Battlefront uh, didn't really have a uh, camp a single player campaign, as well as only had a few like co op things, and it was still the full price of yep. sixty nine dollars. And I paid that full price. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't want to do that again if I know it's a game that I'm not going to be spending time on. Yeah. You know, like a game that I know that I'm not going to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like uh, my experience with Battlefront, I I played it on PC. That was the very first time I ever played Battlefront, and I fell in love with the game because it was it was like this open space, and you could play as different units, and you can fight different factions. And I thought that was really cool because you could like literally live out the scenarios from the different Star Wars movies. Included like there were some planets that were released in the game that weren't released on the movie yet, so like yeah. such as Kashyyyk and the Wookiee home planet. So I thought that was cool. You could play it in Battlefront before it was shown in uh, Episode Three. Um, Question: So, the games line up with a with a movie typically? Yeah, like most like, most of the time. So, for example, okay. you can play on this map called Polis Massa yeah. in episode in oh sorry in Battlefront Two, and 
It uh, is a level from the ending of episode three where Padme gives birth to Luke and Leia. Okay. And, like you, they never fought on that planet in the movie, but you could fight on the planet in the game because <laughs> I again I think they just needed more levels. Okay. And they just wanted to repeat some. So I found out about mods. You can mod Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 on PC. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. So my brother and I started downloading different maps. And um, you could have like 800 units in total on the map. And I was like, oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, And then uh, we got bored of that. And then we realized realized that uh, the PS2 version had two-player co-op split screen. And then we, we bought that for our PS2. And then we just played the shit out of that. And that was that was a lot of fun. That's and pretty then, cool. Oh yeah, totally. And then uh, Battlefront Two, bought it on PS2, played it on, played with my brother again, co-op split screen, and that was really cool too. Then I realized that they aren't making a Battlefront Three as, <laughs> like, as a little kid. That's disheartening. Yeah. And then as you get older, you realize, oh yeah, they make another Battlefront, and uh, this one was not very good. <laughs> well, the it was fun. It, yeah. I, it's one of those games I describe. It's fun for the first five or ten <laughs> hours. <laughs> Yep. And then after you realize how repetitive it is. That's that's what DICE's problem was. They kept saying that the people who started playing this new Battlefront game, which is the one from 2015, they would start playing it and then they would just suddenly fall off. It's because they get they get bored of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And there was this huge gap between people who paid for the new maps and the people who didn't. Because the people who paid for the new maps got the new guns. And then oh. they would always outclass the people who were just starting. Oh, okay. So as a I new see. player, you'll get put into a, uh, a match with people who are like 50 times better than you. That's probably why Darth Vader killed me oh. five, like Pro- 500 times. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> because the first time I played, I was severely outmatched, and I kept dying. And I looked yeah. at my friend, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I haven't even gotten a single kill. Yeah. And it's which, by the way, when I did play uh, multiplayer, it was the same person killing me over and over again. It wasn't even multiple people from from the other team killing yep. me. It was straight up just this one singular person. That's who happened just, to me before too. Yeah. On PC, and I, I'm pretty sure that guy was <laughs> hacking. It's easier to hack on PC than PS4. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, talking about the Battlefront trailer, it looks like there's a female lead character or a female main character. I haven't looked. I don't think there was much else revealed with the storyline. Oh, but actually, st- there's quite or, a bit. Hold on. Let me yeah. look it up. Because I know she has a name. Too, okay. And she has like a, like kind of a backstory. So her – that's the wrong Battlefront, too. I'm on my PC. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's so confusing. Um, it seems like the Star Wars series is – Going with this female protagonist, uh, like female protagonist trend with their most recent things, which I which I think is pretty cool, especially because the first, just with the movie, the first movies, it was a male protagonist aside from Princess Leia, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a different kind of pace. I mean, like yeah. I see that Star Wars is transitioning towards like more uh, female protagonists with. Uh, uh, Rogue One, yes. Um, uh, Force Awakens, and now The Last Jedi, still with strong female protagonists. And I think this series needs this. Um, so according to Kotaku, it says that the, your character's name is Eden, Aiden Versio, Ber- your commando of the Inferno Squad. Um, and you're basically, this takes place after Return of the Jedi, when the Death Star blows up, and so you're, you're like the remnants of the Empire from or the remnants from the Battle of Endor, and you're, like, trying to meet up with the other remnants of the Empire, and you're supposed to... It's supposed to take place from uh, Return of the Jedi all the way up until uh, The Force Awakens. So you see the Empire turn into the Force Awakens. Okay. Order. Yeah. That's so a long... That's a long 30, time. That's 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to do in that time for the game, but apparently you're supposed to, you're going to switch between protagonists. It's going to be mainly about this person who's trying to find redemption, but you're going to switch between, like, playing as Luke Skywalker and Darth Maul and... I wonder how long the game's going to be. Well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. What's the release date for this? November 2017. All right. This year. Don't let us down, Battlefront. Oh, November 17 is 2017, so it's 11 17 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really want Battlefront to do well because, like, last game, I, I played it for around 20, 30 hours, mm-hmm. and then I just suddenly stopped playing because I just lost interest. Mostly because I kept dying all the time. Like I was Dude. always playing with people who outranked me, and that that sucked so hard. Yeah, but yeah, the maps are fun. The the, the classes are cool. Maps are fun. Classes are cool. I think that there should maybe a, be a filtering system between. Yeah, seriously, there needs to be like, and maybe like uh, 
uh, user run servers instead of just yeah. EA run servers because like yeah. I always had a spotty connection. Like I'd always get kicked out or it would like lag. Dude, all the time because uh, when I was playing it at my friend's place, she always had to reset the router. <laughs> yeah, for Battlefront. For Battlefront. See, but, yeah, it's yeah. a problem with me too. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you like yeah, you get your shit together. Seriously. I know. That's coming out in November, and we're mm-hmm. both pretty hyped for it. Yeah, we'll probably play it. Yes. That's all we have in terms of new trailers that have come out. Yeah, that was the biggest one. Yes. <laughs> oh, also, uh, real quick, they announced that the Lost Legacy DLC for Uncharted, it's going to be $40. Wait, really? Yeah. How, how long Which ma- is the game? I don't know. You see, that's the thing. The fact that it's $40 makes me... I don't know how fleshed out this is. Yeah. like if it's this, almost, like a- this almost feels like it's maybe like two-thirds of what a, a regular Uncharted game is. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it better be at least be five or six hours of content. Mm-hmm. If not, if it's less than that, I'm going to be like, yo, please. <laughs> if it's like two hours, I'm going to be like, this is not worth 40 bucks. Yeah. Honestly. Is it is it digital download only? Do you know? I don't I don't know anymore. Let me check real quick. Sure. Uncharted. Because I know that um, a lot of DLC doesn't really come in disc form unless it's a really special case. Yeah. A lot of standalone stuff, at least. At this point, if you're making it forty dollars, it doesn't even seem like a DLC anymore. Just yeah. straight, f- straight up feels like a new game. Although it is, it's supposed to branch off. Oh my god, it's actually a you can get a physical copy of it. Oh wow, huh? Look at that. And you get, uh, if you had a collector's edition of Uncharted Four, then you get some, and you pre-order it, you get special items. Oh, what are those special items? I don't know. It's not telling me yet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. Tell me, please. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think I know yet. Or I don't think we know yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. This game is expected to take over 10 hours to complete. 10 hours to complete? Yeah. So an Uncharted game is maybe, depending on how, depending on the battles, I think it takes about 20 hours to finish. Yeah, because Uncharted 4 took me a long time to yeah. finish. <laughs> oh, Uncharted 4, no doubt, is the longest Uncharted game. That yeah. was definitely a lot longer than it normally is. Also, they upped the difficulties. Even if you were playing with easy, it was still pretty damn hard. Yeah, yeah I don't know much else beyond The Lost Legacy. It's 10 hours. 10 hours for $40. Um, I mean... To be, the cheap side of me is waiting for the price to go down. Yeah, uh, and I'll probably do that as well. Because I don't know if I can't justify. Like I love <clears throat> Uncharted, but I don't know if I can justify waiting. I know. You know, I, I'll wait for them to review it first and like talk about it. Yeah. And I mean, I'll probably play it regardless. I really like Uncharted, but I'll I, play it regardless. I yeah. just don't think I'll pay the forty dollars nah, for it. Wait for that uh, Black Friday deal or yeah. something. Moving on to games that we're currently playing, Jeremy, you can go first. I am playing ukulele, and some of you have probably heard of ukulele, and I've talked about it before on the podcast. I have to ask a really stupid question. Go ahead. Is there an actual ukulele in this? Yes, the song. The, the background music, oh, has, the background u- music. has ukulele themes. Okay, so because you were talking about Banjo-Kazooie mm-hmm. before, so that means the background music of that was actually a banjo and a mm-hmm. K- kazoo. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the opening theme song had a banjo playing with a kazoo like supporting the banjo. Okay. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And this one has a ukulele playing in the background. Nice. Like, it sounds a little bit Hawaii, a little tropical, a little Hawaiian-ish yeah. but for the most part. I'm like, they, they stood true to their name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Musical <laughs> instruments. Um, so I will say, I started playing it. Um, the first few moments got me really smiling. Like, oh my God, it reminded me so much of Banjo-Kazooie. And I, it feels so cool to play this. When I started playing it, um, I just felt like I wasn't satisfied for some reason. Like, How far are you into it? I'm only like the first 20, 30 minutes into the game, and I don't know what to do most of the time. Hmm. <laughs> because, like, you, Banjo Kazooie was the same way. Okay. And I thought, <laughs> I, th- I mean, but th- you kind of had like a defined goal because um, you, you would go to a certain area, there'd always be a certain character. I don't really know what the characters look like in this game. Like, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what the, who the characters are specifically and what they do and what their function is. I only know that there's a guy named Trousers. Who's a snake and he wears pants and he gives you <laughs> abilities that you have to buy like with these feathers called quills or something like that. Got and, it. Um, yeah, uh, I, I wanted it, I wanted it to capture the same imagination I did as a child when I first played Banjo Kazooie, 
It didn't. It did that for me for the first five minutes, and then after that, I, w- I started falling off for some reason. I don't know what it was. Maybe because I'm still thinking about Yakuza, but <laughs> <laughs> but I I still want I still want to get into ukulele, and I've read a lot of reviews on ukulele right now, and it's really mixed. Like a lot of people don't like it, some people do like it. It really depends on the person, but a lot of people who played banjo kazooie, it's divided between those people. People who played banjo kazooie for a long time either said this game is the worst. Or this game reminds you of my childhood, but it's not the best. I guess my question is, there's portions of this game that are nostalgic to your childhood if you've played Banjo-Kazooie before. Yes. What's new in this game? Aside from the graphics? Aside from the graphics. (laughs) What elements are new? Elements that are new. Well, I will say that the the characters themselves, of course, are new. Yeah. Um, the their abilities are different, uh, the, albeit a little bit similar to Banjo and Kazooie, but they're they're definitely a little different. Um, uh, see, everything is new. Everything is new in the game, but it's just like revamped and very similar to Banjo Kazooie. It's it's supposed to be, it is a spiritual successor in a way because it's all the same people who work. Literally, all the same people who worked on Banjo Kazooie worked mm-hmm. on this game. They left Rare to work on this game. I've never I've never played Banjo Kazooie before. Right. I've only seen maybe two videos of ukulele, but I wonder if it's suffering or if the mixed reviews they tried to make it too much like the original. Uh I see it. they 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 do so many callbacks to yeah. Banjo Kazooie. They they want it to they want to make it seem like it's like Banjo Kazooie, but it's really not. And mm-hmm. it, I think that's where they're they're kind of falling off. It's like yeah. they really want you to make it they really want you to think about Banjo Kazooie when you're playing this game, but they're trying also trying to hold their own, and I think they're doing a good job of doing that. It's just a lot of people who played ban- the, the fact that it's so similar to Banjo, people will make comparisons. Got it. And you know, if you want to play Banjo Kazooie or you want to play something like Banjo Kazooie, just play Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> got you, it. Like it's the people who are like, oh, there's a new Goldeneye that came out in like 2008 or nine. It's like, why do you care about that? Just play Goldeneye on N64 if you really <laughs> want to relive those memories. You yeah. Know? But yeah, overall, I I can't really say much. I I shouldn't justify all this by saying I only played 30 minutes because I, I will play more. Yeah, I, I want to play more and talk about it a little bit more. And once I get into the game, I can definitely like lay out uh, my thoughts and feelings and opinions on it. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to collect everything in the game. This this game is one of those collect-a-thons where it, like the old platformers like uh, Donkey Kong 64 where you had to collect everything. or You didn't have to, but it, it, it was part of the game to collect yeah. everything. Now with the I inclusion of achievements, like, you get an achievement for a collect- or trophy rather in my end. From collecting everything, okay. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll play a little bit more. I'll play a little bit more of the game, and I'll yeah, definitely us. keep us updated. I will do. Will do. I'll probably watch some more videos about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll send you a couple of videos. Yeah, like, I'll send good. you a video from each end. The guy who likes it a lot, and the guy who doesn't like it a lot. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, what have you been playing, Elisa? What? Well, I actually f- my f- my boy. Okay? Are you okay? He's like you went, you went from like Elisa <laughs> to old lady right there. You aged like 20 years. Taxes. <laughs> Taxes are ruining my life. <laughs> All right. I've actually finished a game last weekend. I finished Final Fantasy 15. And I, okay. will, I will say that, one, I was tro- totally trying to fight back tears for crying. Really? <laughs> but that's just because majority of the Final Fantasies get me super emotional. Like, after Final Fantasy X, I was bawling. Like, I just thought it was the saddest thing I've ever... Like, one of the saddest endings I've ever seen in a, gotcha. like, in a, gotcha. fan, like a fantasy action-adventure video game, or role-playing game, I mean. And this one gave me a different emotion. But for, before I go that... B- before I go into that, I will talk about Final Fantasy XV holistically leading up to the ending. I really enjoyed Final Fantasy XV. It's not my favorite, but I appreciate it for the risks that it was taking, how it's a lot different from previous Final Fantasies. If I'm thinking about it in this order, Mm -hmm. chapters 1 through 9, 10 had a very... Like, since it's so open world, it had a very open world approach to the storyline. You knew the basic storyline. You knew your basic task of collecting a bunch of swords. And there are different people that you meet along the way, some of them through side missions, some of them through your actual thing. And because it took this open world approach, there were a lot of plot holes within this period of chapter one through chapter nine. Mm -hmm. And then after chapter nine, 
it goes into just straight linear story. Everything just follows after the other. Gotcha. Now, because of this jump from open world to linear, like I said, there's a lot of different plot holes. For There's a lot of things that weren't addressed. But my question to you is, I don't know if they are actually addressed. I just didn't complete the side quest or complete the side mission to address what that plot hole is. Got you, got you. Like, do you have to play the side missions to fill up the main story plot holes? You don't. Uh, you see, I don't. I don't even know to this point. Um, technically, you don't have to complete the side missions to finish the game. If you finish the game, it only takes twenty hours. Gotcha. And it's not that long. Actually. Yeah, but a lot of the side quests are things that veer off to learn about the three other main characters: Ignis, Prompto, and Gladio. Mm-hmm. That's where I feel they could have elaborated more. I just don't know enough about those three characters by the end of the story. But what I do get, but the main thing that I get from the storyline is that the four of them are best friends. They'll do anything for each other. Aww. The main point of Final Fantasy XV is it just feels like a bro story. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> it's heard. A, it's a friendship story. And that's why the ending of it made me sad. Still. Uh, even though there's a lot of missing information for some of the other side characters, the friendship still remains mm-hmm. in the storyline. That's good. And I have went through Chapter 13, the, the controversial Chapter 13 that everyone keeps talking about. And after playing through it, I don't exactly know what was controversial. <laughs> I don't exactly know what was controversial. Uh, for Chapter 13, the original game is you're only playing with the main character Noctis and the new patch you have a choice of playing with Ignis playing that chapter with Ignis and Gladio mm-hmm. and i just feel like the only thing the only significant thing i got from this is you don't have to play with Noctis you can go through this area with different characters but hmm. it didn't contribute to the story or them trekking did not contribute to the story. It was more like, play with different people. <laughs> yeah. What was the most con- controversial thing about it? Because remember you talked about that in one of the podcasts? No, I, I, haven't, I haven't looked into it because I didn't want to be spoiled. Yeah. But, and I'll probably follow up on this. But I'm assuming what the controversial thing was is, since I was talking about how the three characters don't get a main focus, mm-hmm. they wanted to change it up so it doesn't feel like you're playing with Noctis the entire time. That's the only thing I got from chapter 13. If there's any if there are any listeners, if there's something I'm missing, yeah, please let me know because yeah. other aside from aside from your party, it's pretty much the same chapter. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually quite confused too. Yeah, cuz I thought it was like if you've ever played Modern Warfare 2, yeah. There's a mission called No Russian where you kill all the people in the airport. Mm-hmm. See, now that's controversial. Like you're killing innocent people in a yeah. video game and not playing as the main character of the video game. Yeah. I don't understand how that's not controversial. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm about to just look it up real quick. So chapter 13. Ten, you see, Kotaku has an article that says 10 stages of coping with Final Fantasy 13's chapter 13. <laughs> but I'm like, okay. I don't see, I don't know what the, I don't know what's going on. Denial. Anger. You can't bargain. Anger. Oh. Anger. (laughs) My anger's on there three times. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) I briefed, I read through this, and I see where, I see where the issue is. The biggest issue is in this stage when you're playing with Noctis, uh, majority of your weapons are taken away from you. Oh. And you receive a different weapon. Now, my Noctis was at level 55 when I went through this, okay. and it didn't make a significant impact on my battling. I didn't like. I didn't feel like, oh my god, Noctis is dying all the time. <laughs> I pretty much survived it. So gotcha. if you were under leveled, I can understand why you don't like that. I I just didn't think that the battling was that big of a deal. The other thing that I've read about here is a spoiler, but there is a reveal by one of the side characters, and it relates back to the whole plot hole thing where I didn't know this like I didn't know this was a thing. I don't know if there was a side quest that would have explained all of this. Mm, but gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um I haven't played the game yet, but uh if I do play it, I mean I don't really care about spoilers, but 
Um, it just sounds like that there's not really, there wasn't really a big deal with chapter 13, and people were just like overstating what they were trying to. Do. Yes, I didn't find it a big deal. I think that overall, Final Fantasy 15 was a good game. It's not my favorite, but I rate this higher than a few other Final Fantasies. Nice. I think what I keep sit- talking about with the change of story, it's because they were trying to modernize it that mm-hmm. compared to a typical Final Fantasy where the, where the story is explained in pretty much 40, 50 hours, the story yeah. is explained in 20 hours, and it cut out a lot of important details. Yeah. But no. if you're following the if you're just following as a whole the friendship of the four, it the point gets across. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. What, what is, I think I asked you this already, but what is your favorite Final Fantasy? My favorite Final Fantasy is ten. Ten. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. The one with Titus and Yuna and Aaron. Ah. Yeah. I think didn't they like port it to the newer systems? Yes. So I actually have a version of ten on my Vita. Oh nice. And they changed that up a bit where you can get more abilities and level up your map a lot more. Huh. Or level up your ability map, I mean. That's nice. Yes. And they sort... It's like they tweak the graphics a bit. It does look a lot nicer. Hmm. It's not like it's not like going to be the 7 remake where it's a complete... Gosh, yeah. yeah. Complete reworking. Yeah. But it looks nice. Yeah. If you think about it, Final Fantasy X was the first Final Fantasy of PS2. And that came... And that was like the shift from of graphics where it, mm-hmm. it started looking like real humans. So <laughs> that's good. And before it was like tiny sprites, and now it's like full blown human looking characters. Exactly. So when Seven Remake comes out, it, it'll be more human looking. <laughs> oh, Hopefully. definitely. Oh my god. <laughs> but yes, Final Fantasy Fifteen. I recommend it. I recommend trying it. How many? How many kittens out of ten? How many kittens? Uh huh. Out of ten. Uh huh. Cats give me allergies, so... I hate cats, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, I, it's like cats can be cute. How, how many hyperallergenic dogs out of <laughs> 10? <laughs> I give it... I want to lean towards like an 8.1 or something. 8.1? Okay. So that means eight hypoallergenic dogs and its leg. <laughs> People always give rap about IGN. I just want to see what IGN gave Final Fantasy X. I think IGN gave it like an 8.3. I'm not 10, 15. I'm but what did Metacritic enough. give it is my is my question. Metacritic. We're looking up uh, the ratings real quick. Yeah. Uh, IGN is always like, people always give IGN a bad rap about being sketchy on the ratings. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, 8.2 out of 10. Nice. Yeah. And then Metacritic was a eight, is at 81%. So uh, that's an 8.1. So your experience falls in with everyone else who played the game. At nice. Least. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm average. <laughs> this is exciting. Average as average can be. Exactly. What I have to say about IGN and just reviews in general is I do read them, but I also take it with a grain of salt because, for example, sometimes the author that's assigned to review it is, for example, not a – doesn't play JRPGs. Yeah. Then, it, then it's like, what's the why, are you, why is someone who doesn't play JRPGs – reviewing this game you know what you know what i mean no it's like i mainly play only call of duty yeah and i'm reviewing this jrpg (laughs) and this game sucks it's It's like why are you doing this like why are you what's the point then yeah like what why (laughs) just why exactly so there's one more game that i've been playing i've only played two hours of it so far because i've been it's my new commute game okay i'm playing fire emblem heroes on nintendo wait what are you it's a nintendo game what are you playing it on i'm playing on my iphone Oh, oh, interesting. Yes. Fire Emblem Heroes. So the thing about Fire Emblem Heroes is, okay, I never played the Fire Emblem series, but there's uh-huh. a, I'm assuming there's a bunch of them. Yes. Now, so. what they did was they took all the main characters of those previous Fire Emblem series and they just put them into the Heroes game, which is a mobile game. Mm-hmm. And it's the same tactical game. It's, um, it's made for iPhone, or it's made for... It's made for mobile. To attack people, you drag across a grid. Um, you get different orbs for playing. It's like it. It's a simple mobile game, but mm-hmm. it's enjoyable, and there is a story to it. Nice. Yes. And it's, it's officially from Nintendo. Like, is it? It is officially from. Is Nintendo. Is it made by a third-party dev, or is it made by d- Nintendo themselves? I don't know. Let me open up this app right now, and I'll find out for you. 
because there is uh, something in the corner. Intelligent systems. Oh. Yes. So if you like, this is this oh, is the gotcha. front of it. Intelligent systems. Cool. I don't know if this game is on any other platform other than mobile, but it's it feels definitely made for mobile. I think it's only on mobile. Yeah. Because Nintendo's branching into the mobile sector with like they started with Super Ooh. Mario Run. And then Pokemon Go. Go. And then now that. Yeah. And I don't know. There might be other games Nintendo has published for the mobile system, but I'm not aware of it. This is the first game that I've downloaded to my phone in years. That you actually started playing. That right? I've actually started playing. Yeah, I've never really been big on mobile games either. Yeah. Um, I wanted to try this out because I have heard that it's a good way to just pass time, and I'm like, I'm on a commute, so I might as well try it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure it's been passing the time for you. Yes, <laughs> and you're it's past it. two hours so far. Oh, nice. Yes. How how much of the game are you in? Like, how many hours? Oh have you sunk God, in? how many hours? Yeah, do you only play it in on your commute, or do you play? It oh, I've only too? been playing it on my commute. Oh, and how many hours total have you played so far? Two hours. Oh, uh, total. Total. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, sorry, that's what I meant by two hours. Sorry, I, I thought you meant like you only play it for two hours, like going to oh, work. Oh, sorry, sorry, work. sorry, sorry. Yeah, I've only played it for two hours so gotcha. far. Gotcha. Okay. Because sometimes I sleep on my commute too. That sounds nice. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fun. I don't have much to say about it. I'm only, I think, on the, I'm still on the prologue. Really? Yeah, hmm. but I mean, I'm just getting used to the controls. There is one thing I have to say about this game. It's that uh, after you finish battles, you get orbs to just buy different things like potions and what, or I'm, I'm assuming trade it for different items. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you can buy, you can spend money to buy more orbs. Ooh, nice. And I'm, and that's how they get you. Oh, that's the yeah, microtransactions. Yes, there that's how they get you. There it is. By the way, to anyone listening, you get a lot of orbs when you finish battles. I don't think you ever need to buy orbs. Don't tell Nintendo that. Don't tell Nintendo that. You're going to know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have to say so far. I'll give an update uh, cool. next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it'll be it'll be fun to to... Once we start finishing up our other games. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. God. <laughs> Speaking of finishing up other games, can we move on to our next topic that I'm kind of excited to talk about? All right. So our final topic of the day, we decided to move our Yakuza Zero discussion to the end so that if you don't want to listen to us anymore, you can end this podcast no, right now. No, but don't leave. We still love Wait, you. Wait, don't leave, though. <laughs> we were... A lot of exciting things have happened. Which, by the way, I have a side story. Sure. Jeremy knows about it. Yeah. So there was a point. Um, I'm currently on chapter 11 now. There was actually a point where I surpassed Jeremy in the chapters. Yep. And I totally spoiled. And I was, like, <laughs> I was so sad. I was so shocked and I'm, so sad. I'm so, you know. It's okay. The entire time we've been talking about this, I've always been under the assumption that you were three chapters ahead of me or no. something. And I felt terrible after because it was a major plot twist or it was a major plot twist in the Majima story. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sorry. it's okay. So I uh. that <laughs> night after she told me, I stayed up until midnight playing <laughs> to that point, and I was so tired the next day. I didn't say anything. I was I didn't talk to anyone at work oh, that day because I was just like I just want to go to sleep. I'm sorry. But I can't because Yakuza. <laughs> It's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine now. But I will. S we're both at the same point now, more or less. Yes. Yes, we are. We're both caught up. Mm hmm So that's good. And uh, so we're nearing the end of the game, finally. If you, those of you who are tired of listening to us talk about Yakuza. It's a long-ass game. It is, though, it's... but that's what I love about it. I will okay. – <laughs> Talk first. I have. Some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Go first. I, you know, it's 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 a really long game, and you and I said before, you get your money out of it when you play it. Like you, you definitely feel like you're getting more than what you bargained for because I've sunk a hundred hours into this game, and I'm still not tired of it yet. Yeah. And usually by this time, I get tired of the game. Like I would get tired of a game, and I right now I'm just like, yeah, I'm okay with this. Like I I can I can live with this. I'm okay with this too. This is one of the most involved games. I've ever played before. Yo, me too, though. Like, I, seriously. Because typically, you have all of these side quests and sub-stories, and you, and you say you do, like, 15 of them, and, but then you ignore the rest. Everything just relates to each other in some manner. It's and, so weird. <laughs> but it, it's the fact <laughs> that Everything is important. Like, yeah, but that's what I like about it. Like, the littlest thing, the, little, the, the smallest character that you talk about that you forgot, they come back in a certain way, and you're like, holy crap, this person is going to help me make money. <laughs> really, though? <laughs> 
Oh my god. Speaking of which, I played the sub story for the first time where there is a Steven Spielberg and oh, uh, Michael J- and Michael Jackson parody. Miracle Johnson, yeah. Miracle, yeah, his yeah. Name's Miracle Johnson. I know, yeah. Come on. <laughs> but um did they help you out in the, the And they're helping me out now in the real estate game. So when you start making a lot more money, always use Miracle Johnson to, to you know Dude, do certain things. He yeah. is like when he boosts up or when he advises on your in uh, on your real estate mm-hmm. dude it boosts up the level so yep. much use him for ed- so i don't know if you know what the symbols mean i do know what the symbols okay mean. Then, yes. yeah the double circles whenever which by the there. which by the way it took it took a while for me to understand the symbols same. for the cabaret and the real estate same, game same. in fact i was actually choosing x for a <laughs> majority of them yeah and until i just googled it and i realized i've been doing this shit wrong the entire time so here's a little fun tidbit <laughs> fact about japanese games and american yeah. games so uh, on the playstation specifically circle in japan means yes so whenever you see something for a yes it's always going to be circle in a japanese game That's- and x means no that's good to know, actually. Yeah, and in the United States, I never knew that. Circle means no or back, and okay. X means yes. Wow, it's a weird cultural difference. So that like, is a that's a significant cultural difference. Yep. Because I kept choosing X. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, yeah, like even though, like even in the, in the controller itself, like when you press back, yes. as circle in the U.S., right? That's what we do in Japan. If you want to go back and to a menu in a, in a PlayStation game, it's going to be X all the time. <laughs> And I'm like, I can't get used to that because I'm so used to X, you know? Because right? X marks the spot. Yeah, <laughs> X marks the spot. So I want to talk about something that I saw um, two weekends ago that relates to Yakuza. And I, I sent you a picture of this. Yes. Okay, so. It was awesome, by the way. I know, and I really. I just, I just hit it's you on accident. Fine. She, she hit my arm, <laughs> but it was, it was a light hit. So uh, I talked about before how in the game I used to be obsessed with slot car racing. And I, I beat all that section of it. And it, it's a part of the game in Kir, uh, Kazuma Kiryu's story where you um, where you uh, find slot cars and you race them against children. I know it sounds stupid and it's ridiculous because it is. Dude, it's fun beating children. It is though, but it's like, great. The fact that you can upgrade your car and do all this stuff, like that adds another like like at least 15 hours to the game because there are so many different ways you can combine your car and you if you lose a race, you have to figure out what went wrong. Exactly. And so uh, I saw that and I played the crap out of that in, in, in Yakuza 0 and I was like, oh man, this is so cool. Like I wondered, like in the 80s, was this really, really popular in the 80s? And so I, my girlfriend and I, we went to the, uh, the San Francisco Trade Blossom Festival. Uh, and that's a festival in Japantown in San Francisco where they uh, celebrate Japanese culture and Japanese food. And so uh, we, uh, we were walking by, like right when we entered, we were walking by some booths. And there was like a Hello Kitty truck and there was like uh, j- Japanese summer games, like, you know, like fishing for the fish with like a little like rice paper net thing. Uh, and then next to all this, there was like, three tracks for pocket car circuit racing <laughs> literally pocket car circuit racing and i was like holy crap this is real like i saw it for the very first time it was an awesome eyes. it was an awesome picture by the way oh thank you i think mean, i'm gonna pull it right now and just show you again because i actually never got a really good look at it but i was freaking out and my girlfriend's like why do you care that's a children's game i'm like you don't understand i lived through this i played this <laughs> And she's like, you're you, weird. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> you don't know me. You don't know these streets. You don't know my struggle. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Speaking of cars and struggles and sure. the streets, Fate of the Eight is out. Or sorry, Fate <sighs> of the Furious. Fate of the Furious. I'm, is out. I I really want to watch that actually. Like I don't. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> yeah, none of my, yeah. I'm gonna watch it eventually. No, totally. Like, to be honest, I might even spend money to watch it. <laughs> and, oh no. Yeah. I oh, actually yeah. enjoy that series a yeah. lot. <laughs> you wanna watch it together? Because I don't have anyone to watch it with. Oh God, that's a really tempting question. We'll not, talk. Not we'll today. talk. We'll All talk right. after this. Sounds good. I need someone to watch it with. <laughs> that thoroughly enjoys the series as I do for yes. its ridiculousness. Because I think it's a ridiculous film franchise. <sighs> Can you imagine if there was a Fast and Furious game? Is it, there probably there is. is one. There is. There's a Tokyo Drift game, and then there's an oh. arcade game. Can I don't want the Tokyo Drift game though. I want like. I want the Dominic Toretto. The Dominic Toretto game. I want a Dom- Dominic Toretto game because freaking A, I just have a lot of issues with the Tokyo Drift movie. <laughs> no, I understand. Like, Fast and Furious is ridiculous, but the Tokyo Drift one just makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was the weird off one. <laughs> that was the weird off one. I mean, Bow Wow is, Bow Wow is like your friend. You're in <laughs> Bow Wow's your friend. Yeah, Bow Wow is your friend. You're being punished by being sent to Japan, uh, I mean, where I you learn about street racing from a Korean. <laughs> that's not really a punishment, you know. 
It, that's my point. That's why I'm like, what kind of punishment is this? Like, Come on. If I, if I got in trouble and had, been, had to move to Japan, I'd be like, I'm okay with this. I'd be yeah. like, oh, no. I'm like, going to Japan. Oh, no. no. Like, I, how could you do this to me? But if I was if I was the age I am now and I had to go to high school, I'd be like, I hate my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to okay, high school. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Going to college in Japan, though, I hear is um, it's a different story from going to high school in Japan. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, you're going away from the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You have the picture up? Yes, I do. Just just oh my gosh. Just look at this. Maybe I'll I'll post this for everyone to see. Yeah, you you have it too. I do. It's it's awesome. Like, it's so cool. They look just like the ones in the game. I know. So cool. Look at this little child's face. Where ah, yeah. <laughs> when you were watching it, did the batteries actually die? Or like did everything that I'm taking into consideration when I raced? Is that actually a thing when I when you watch yeah. this live? Well, I watched this for like thirty seconds. Okay. From this angle, so I saw these yeah. kids racing around this like tiny eight figure track for yeah. like thirty seconds, and then they didn't run out of batteries because like okay. it was just you know it was just whatever like they were just watching the cars go, and I guess it takes it takes a certain amount of time for the batteries to run out, but I yeah. assume that the batteries do run out and they slow down and stop. Okay. So for sure. Yeah. So that was cool. It was cool seeing that live. I'm like. Of all the Cherry Blossom festivals I went to, this is the one that had that after I played Yakuza Zero. Like, That's why awesome. was why was that the case? You know, <laughs> they knew. Oh yeah, totally. They totally do. Totally um, do you have anything else to say about Yakuza Zero before we move on to the next Yakuza thing? Oh, I hit the billions and I finally beat Mr. Shakedown. Oh, nice. In fact, I beat Mr. Shakedown seven times already. Did you do that little tip I told you? I did do the tip. And you get like super hella money, dude. You get so much money. It's ridiculous. Also. When now that my ability map is a little more boosted up, mm -hmm. it's like I, I'm fucking strong in this <laughs> game. There, okay, yep. I will say this though. Did you notice that? Like, I don't know how you were updating your map. I thought I was updating it pretty, uh, like at a fair pace. But there came a point when I switched back from Majima and from Majima to Kiryu. Now before Kiryu goes to Osaka, yeah. Um, there was a weird like difficulty spike when i'm d when i'm fighting enemies and yes. it's just like everyone just starts like i thought i was perfectly fine and then everyone just started attacking me and like there was like less room for d like there were points where i was just hitting the L defend button the l1 button for like minutes just huh. because i kept getting attacked but the thing is i think i wasn't updating my ability map as fast as i should have oh, interesting. so i so I updated my map uh, after playing the real estate game. I updated it to getting the 400 million um, abilities. And now I'm perfectly fine. Like everything, like I'm pretty much back to normal where I, where I was when I was battling. But I just felt like this is a weird spike all of a sudden. Am I doing something wrong? I just, I think I wasn't updating as fast as I should have. I mean, like this isn't part in the story. Actually, no. Is it was it the part in the story when all the yakuza are trying to chase you? Or yeah. It, oh, okay. You see, I think it just started to get harder as a challenge. Okay. And uh, it's not really the fault of you upgrading. It's more like they just wanted to make it so it was just a little harder for you okay. in general. And for I, sure. I, I, I kind of like that, but yeah. at the same time, I'm like, give me a break. I know <laughs> it is harder. It is harder, but when you update the map, and everything just gets super easy because then you get the abilities that correspond to weapons. Yeah. And it. It helps you out, so. Yeah, no, it makes you feel a lot better. Yes. That's all I have to say about Yakuza 0. Yep. Now, the next Yakuza game. So, the Yakuza Kiwami I talked about before, it's a remake of the very first Yakuza game, and it's actually coming out later this year. On, I know. On August 29th, and here's the good news. The best news that I found was great. It's only going to be 30 bucks. It's 29.99. That's really good. That's so I didn't know it was going to be I didn't know yeah. it was going to be 30 bucks. I actually paid full price for Yakuza 0, which was 60. Oh. Dude, what you said before, a like a dollar per a, for one dollar an hour. <laughs> one dollar an hour. Yeah, it's sixty bucks. Yakuza Zero is worth the sixty bucks for sure. Yeah, like yeah. definitely. Yeah, because I sunk. Like I said before, I sunk more than a hundred hours in, so I overpaid. <laughs> basically, <laughs> <laughs> overpaid in hours. That I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, I'm probably too. gonna finish. I would like to finish Yakuza by mid May. Yeah, maybe same. earlier than that, so it helps out with my traject or my line of games that I still need to play. Yeah, same. So let's let's and it'll start it, and then we're going in the exact order. 
or like yeah. not ex- yeah it we're is not going to do order. yeah exact order because the first game's after, the first game is Kiwami yeah so, yeah Kiwami looks really beautiful more beautiful than Zero and oh, I can't yeah. wait. I cannot wait August come sooner I know <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so do you want to talk about the last thing on our list yes the last thing we're going to talk about before we end this podcast uh, this podcast is attached to a blog mm-hmm. that I have it's called Triangle C and it's where uh, so I don't know I know oh my god my voice again is like Old breaking out <laughs> I don't only do podcasts but I also write occasionally and and make videos and make videos <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's been really difficult trying to keep up with keep up with it just with because of life I always I always try to aim releasing something once a week but you know, things get in the way, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, come look at the blog. We're, yes. We're, I am helping write some stuff for her. Um, right now, I, I wrote an article a long time ago, and I finally put it somewhere. It's about this game on Steam called Double Action Boogaloo. It's a free-to-play game where you, it's a third-person shooter where you fight other players online, and it's pretty cool. Yes. Um, but the, the next post I'm going <laughs> to make is about Alien Isolation and the lighting in the game and how it's used. Um, just as a, an, a cinematic art style. And I think that's really cool because it comes straight from the Alien movie from uh, Ridley Scott. And I think that this is a true testament to Alien games and what Alien games should be. Yes. So I'm really excited to have Jeremy write for my blog. Yep. Although I will say the Triangle C, the title, it's a, it's a play on my initials. Yeah, I realize that. <laughs> so I think, uh, but... You can't change the name. I can't change the name. It's so fine. Just... I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I, those are not my initials. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much Jeremy and I not only bring podcasts to you. Now we're collaborating and writing and creating videos and other types of content for you. Mm-hmm. So check out the blog; it'll be in the description. Okay. As well, and that's all I have for today. Gotcha. Do you have anything else to say? No, nope, that's it. Yes. So we'll be coming back to you next week. For me, now that Final Fantasy is completed, I want to play, I want to start Persona 5, at least like the first two hours of Persona Finish 5. Finish Yakuza 0. Oh, dude. <laughs> Making money, like. <laughs> I know, I know. Dude, hustle and flow. Yeah, I know. You have so much money now. <laughs> Finish have, the game so when we you can have, talk about it. I know. What chapter are you on? Are I'm you on the in? last one. You're on the last one? I'm as Majima now in okay. Osaka, and uh, uh, Kiryu's on his way to Osaka. See, I'm s- I've been so obsessed with cabaret and uh, real estate stuff that I haven't played. I haven't um, I've stepped off of the uh, storyline, but I'll probably finish. Like I said, I want to finish Yakuza Zero by mid May, if early, if not earlier. Yeah, well, here's a little tip for you: when you finish the game, you get this thing called Premium Adventure, where you can switch between two both of the characters, and you can just finish everything that you didn't finish in the game, and then you can 100 percent it. So. For sure. Yeah, that's it. Nice. So it's not exactly a game. Uh, a pl- uh, it's not exactly a new game plus, but it's like just it's you you can go back to the game afterwards. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Yep. So I will have some Yakuza updates by next week, as well as let everyone know what the first few hours of Persona Five are like. Jeremy, do you know what you're going to talk about next week yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the seventh episode of Downtime Podcast, and we will see you next week. Thank you.